K-State, they heard all the haters. They heard all the doubters. Uh, that was apparent by a lot of the different things that were said after the game. And I think to be included in that is everybody on the team themselves. They all understood that they needed to point the fingers back at themselves. Connor Riley did it. Avery Johnson did it. Everybody involved that had some kind of air, they came through, made corrections tonight. It all led to a pretty impressive and dominant 31-7 K-State victory over number 20 Arizona. The Wildcats, the ones in red and white, jumped out to a 7-0 lead. They took up almost half of the first quarter with their possession. They scored. At that point, you go, boy, this is – this is going to get a little dicey. Connor Riley had to come out and prove himself. It included a big fourth down conversion. And then the rest of the night, it was smooth sailing for the Cats. For the most part, still some minor things that they could have cleaned up along there. But in a, a very impressive 31-7 win for the first top 20 matchup in Bill Snyder Family Stadium since the 2014 Auburn game, which kind of flipped things around since K-State didn't win that game. Yeah, I think that the, the play that kind of go, goes on notice, that kind of set the tone of how the game was going to go, was that fourth and one conversion because you, it was K State had been on the field for 14 plays on defense. You had three plays on offense, and it's oh crap, you got to get half a foot. And K State barely got it on that fourth down play, but got it. And from there, it kind of seemed like K State was going to be able to kind of cruise the rest of the night. You, you get a stop on defense after the, the opening touchdown. And then Dylan Edwards has is just an electric factory when he has the ball in his hands and scores relatively easily on that punt return. And kind of from there, it's like, okay, it's off to the races. And for the most part, it, it wasn't very competitive. I mean, to be honest, like it, it was a 31-7 to game that could have been at worst 38-7, to maybe at best if everything goes well for K-State, maybe even 45-7. to Like it, it was a total one-sided affair. And really, uh, a hat tip goes to K-State's coaching staff because I think that they kind of knew from the two-lane game that they needed to get better in a lot of spots. And for the most part tonight, they played pretty flawless. Yeah, and there's a good chance that the two most influential plays of the game came pretty early on, relatively speaking. The fourth down conversion, which was, was big. I, from your angle, did you think they got it initially? It, it was it was very close. I, I was kind of surprised on the lack of a push but that, that's one thing that when I was upstairs, though, when you get the touchback and you all the ball ha has to do is touch that 35-yard line, that makes it a lot easier to say, okay, we can go for this. Like, we can, we think that we can make this. And I think that that's went, that was part of the reason that K-State probably went for it is knowing that you only had to touch the 35-yard line because, I mean, we, we see that in the NFL a lot, too, is you touch the 35 first down. And Avery Johnson said that it was – the first quarterback sneak he's done since he was in high school. Look, I saw a lot of Avery Johnson games when he was at Mays, the you know sophomore through senior year. I cannot remember a quarterback sneak, and I saw the close games. I saw him play Derby, uh, and that was kind of thing, that was about the only close games they ever played when Avery was in high school. He must have been talking like freshman football at Mays because I can't imagine QB sneaks with Avery Johnson. Uh, but they got it, and then the second one, massive by Keenan Garber, where it looked like Arizona probably had a touchdown. He comes in out of nowhere, makes a pretty impressive pick. He talked about it after the game, and then I asked Avery Johnson at the end because it was kind of brought up, the defense's performance, and I said, if – you had made that throw, and Keenan Garber picked you off in that situa situation. What would your reaction have been? And he basically just said, you have to just tip your cap to the guy because he made a heck of a play. Yeah, that, that's one of the best plays that a K-State defensive back has made in a really long time. The, the closing speed on that was elite because that, that's a touchdown. If Noah Fafita th throws that probably half a second earlier. So to, for Garber to come in and then make that play and complete the play by intercepting it, huge. And, and I think that that's a play that also kind of goes unnoticed in a game when you kind of blow the doors off the other team is that there are certain plays that you really need to highlight. And that, that, that's one of them. And, and I think that Casey, for the most part on defense tonight, got a lot of pressure and it, it only showed with one sack. But Noah Fafita kind of took a beating tonight. He got hit probably six, seven, eight times in that first half where it felt like you could kind of see him start to wear down a little bit. And, and I think that that's kind of just a testament to K-State's defense as a whole really shoring up a lot of the mistakes that they made in the two-lane game. Yeah, I mean, you think about the, the defense tonight, 
they really – it's tough to talk about him because they made it boring the rest of the game for the most part. Chris Kleiman noted afterwards that they were really good for the most part at stopping Arizona on third down. Then they were also good on fourth down. Arizona was just one of four, and I think it was the first fourth down that they converted. After that, nothing. They did it. The pass rush, while the sack total wasn't there, they were active all night long. A lot of lateral movement from Noah Fafita, He's, and he doesn't move vertically all that much. That's the one thing, and I'm sure K-State knew that. And Brendan Mott, even with just the one sack, was a force because he was getting held left and right. He said after the game that at one point a ref came up to him after one play and said, yeah, it probably was a hold, but he wasn't close enough to the quarterback for the flag to be thrown. He said, ah, first time I've heard that one. So Brendan Mott was disruptive, and there's a lot of encouraging things going on in the defense. Brendan Mott might be – really totality of the team, the most encouraging player for K-State right now because I think there were pretty good expectations for him last season. He didn't get there, and you kind of wondered, okay, what are we going to get this season? He's come out these first three games and been phenomenal and the exact kind of disruptive pass rusher K-State needed. Yeah, I think that Brendan Mont has probably been the best player, but the second best player on K-State's defense right now is Austin Romain. I mean, he had another great game tonight, was all over the field making plays. And it was a, a kind of a, a boring game to the point where, like, when I did players of the game, I said Joe Klanderman was the, the defensive MVP because K-State's defense was just swarming so much and kind of took everything away. Ted Rowe and McMillan got his, but nobody else could really do anything. And, and Arizona got some yards and got some first downs. But other than that, it was kind of shut down. And it, it's this is a statement win for K-State. But, but I will say, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit after the game, I think Tulane is probably better than what we thought going in and afterwards in Arizona, maybe a peg below what we expected and anticipated. Yeah, well, and, and one of the notable things you talked about, Tedero McMillan, still got his. Ends up 11 catches for 138 yards, but the most notable number out of that, 21 yards after catch. So, And Chris Kleiman brought it up after the game that probably the most impressive thing they did tonight defending him was – it was a lot of catch tackle. It was, there was not much movement for him afterwards. That was significant, and everybody else, for the most part, didn't do a whole lot. Now, the guys that mattered and scored the football, thirty, you know, they, they put up all those points, get everybody going. Uh, Avery Johnson was really good tonight, over 150 passing yards. The, the total numbers won't bear it out with the way that the completion percentage looks. He was pretty accurate for the most part tonight. I mean, got dinged for a handful of drops from Dante Cephas. That's something that can be talked about later on in the week. But he was pretty good there, and then his legs showed up over 100 rushing yards. It was dynamic. It was important for K-State. And I'm just going to pat myself on the back. I did say in our over-unders this week that I wouldn't be surprised if Avery Johnson led the team in rushing tonight. Yeah, it was fun to get to kind of see the whole package, and I think that that's kind of what the offense will look like going forward. You got to see some Avery Johnson runs. You got to see some zone reads where Avery Johnson got to keep it. You got to see some zone reads where Arizona was so keyed in on Avery Johnson that the running backs broke free. So you kind of got to see the whole bag there. Passing game was better tonight. I think that it's keep, it keeps getting better because uh, you're a handful of plays again from having a pretty an even bigger night passing. Dante Cephas has to catch that first drop. Second one, a little bit more understandable because Avery Johnson did kind of zing it when he probably just needed to put a little bit more touch on it. But other than that, offense was really good tonight, and I think that you kind of got to see the whole Connor Riley in his bag because some of those plays in the goal line were magical. I mean, Will Swanson just walked in for a touchdown. I said that I could have scored on that. And then uh, Braden Lofton also, that the play to him was a very good play call as well. That might be one of the more important things to highlight about K-State's offense and Connor Riley right now is that, yes, there are no doubt things that he's still learning he has to get better about. He obviously admits that. I mean, Avery Johnson said after the game, like, Connor Riley is very, very hard on himself. And so this whole team understands when they screw up, what they need to do to correct it. But a highlight should be he has – designed and put into practice some really good plays over the first three weeks of the season and how easy K-State has made it look when they get down basically inside the 15-yard line to score a touchdown, that is significant because that's an area of the field where 
a lot of teams don't make it look as easy as K-State has. And, we, I mean, people watching this know that K-State teams in the past, even under Chris Kleiman, have not made it look that easy. So that's significant. Tonight they did a better job of figuring out the rest of the field, moving it down there. Jace Brown had a big catch. Uh, Keegan Johnson, not as many targets, but in terms of the way the game played out, this is the kind of night you'd take from Keegan Johnson where I think it was two catches, but they were allowed two catches. You feel good about it. Now let's finish with special teams. Chris Tennant did miss a kick again. You know, that's something to monitor moving forward. I don't think you're overly concerned. He bounced back, made the one later in the game. Most notable, though, Dylan Edwards has brought back special teams. You punt return touchdown tonight. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I think that just having him back there on punt and kickoff, I think, is going to be a big deal. I mean, you saw... Arizona after he ran that one back they kind of refused to kick to him and just kick to the sidelines uh, the one thing that I was going to note as a kind of a final note on the offense is that you heard Chris Kleiman after Saturday say that they are kind of lacking an identity I think that they found I think they found it tonight uh, I think that the identity is to run the football and be efficient in the passing game and that that's pretty much for the most part what they were tonight they ran the football very well and they were efficient when they took their shots in the passing game well, I, I said it earlier in the week, but we know that the philosophy of Connor Riley and Matt Wells in the offseason was throw to score, run to win. I think they did a pretty good job of that tonight. Could have been even better, and that that's maybe the most impressive thing and the one thing to take moving forward. K-State, to win 31-7 to over this Arizona team is impressive, but you could still watch it, and it's not even nitpicking to find things that are still – problems that can be corrected that should actually be an encouraging thing moving forward because the strides k-state made from i think week one to week two on the offense were noticeable and then they were pretty massive week two to week three including defense as well so plays out we'll have a sunday show for you this week i promise with drew fan and myself and then plenty of post-game coverage over at kso on on three and also right here on the youtube page you can go watch chris Kleiman and every player's post-game availability and everything else including highlights from tonight's game so oh. oh only one team can win in the state on a friday night so that's kind of tough if you're the other team in the state well, the good news for KU is that it was the last time they will play in the state of Kansas this year, except for when they come to Manhattan because uh, they've decided to annex their play to the state of Missouri. So um, big brain move by Travis Goff there. Uh, congratulations, KU Athletics. I'm Mason Vogt. That's Drew Galloway. Thanks for watching KSO. Oh, I'm sure the, the nasty KU fans are going to have a field day with that one.